Oh, it's still Welcome live. back to Pony Fans Live at Lakewood's First and Ten. Pony Fans Live brought to you by Game Day Cloth. Love your team, love your clothes. And PonyFans.com, the oldest, largest, and only free website dedicated to the SMU Mustangs and Pony Fans everywhere. Once again, our guests tonight are quarterbacks Jared Romo and Lance McElhenney. Um, we're going to tackle this year's team a little bit with both of these guys. And at the end of this segment, uh, we do have a mic here, so if any of you have any questions for either, either of them, please feel free to come up to the microphone after this segment. Go easy on the questions. <laughs> or go easy on the okay. questions. All right, both of you were in Lubbock this past weekend to watch Sunday's opener. And I know both of you are proud Mustangs. You have two children who are now Red Raiders. I do. How do you balance the uh, it's easy. supporting your children's school versus supporting it's, the team? I just... You? I don't support my children's school. I just wrote a check for them. Actually, I had I put it on a charge card, and now I'm trying to pay for it. But um, yeah, no, I'm an SMU fan. I went out there, and um, that's a good place to win too. But it was a tough game. Our guys played really, really hard. No mixed emotions of any kind for you. Z oh, none. I'm not a Tech fan. Is it is it hard to watch your team? I mean, rather, do you, do you find yourself wanting to strap it up and go play again every fall? I get kind of geared up. I do. do yeah, I, mean, I don't. I, I got to get a little space sometimes. <laughs> maybe, in a, maybe in a little bit I'll be like that. Yeah, but, you will. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I get into it. I like watching for sure. All right, Kyle Padron started six games last year, including the route of Nevada in the Hawaii Bowl. But Sunday was his first season opener. How is opening day different from a quarterback when you are leading your team into battle, so to speak, to? use the analogies that everyone goes into comparing war and football, which of course is not fair, but how is opening day different? Well, um, I thought it was the perfect time to go into Lubbock, Texas and win a football game. Obviously, they, they came off the bowl game and were riding high, and part of this whole game of football is thinking you're good. And uh, SMU thinks they're good, and they still should. The difference in the opening game compared to Nevada is the Texas Tech Red Raiders. I mean, they got a good football team. They got a lot of speed. And um, some of those mistakes that were made by um, Kyle and the team were, I mean, we fumbled a punt and they, they score off of that. And we had a, you know, kind of a weak interception. That was just team speed. And those two mistakes kind of put us in a jam for the first half. But aside from that, if you, if you were to say that um, your team with a minute and 28 seconds had the ball and they could go down and tie or potentially win the game, that's a good game by SMU. And our defense played their hearts off. I mean, it was, it was hot. I mean, we were working on our suntans there. And uh, I'm telling you, it was a hot day in Lubbock. And uh, our guys never gave up. And I was proud of that. OK, you made, you made a good point, though. Your quarterback throws a couple of picks in the first half. It's broiling hot. You're on the road against a team that's generally bigger, stronger, faster. Yet somehow there they are a minute and a half out, uh, from the end of the game, still with a chance to compete. How, uh, how encouraged did you come away from that game about the prospects for what the Mustangs can do this season? I, I loved it. I was proud. I was proud to be a fan. I was proud to be a, a letterman. What I was really proud about, not the loss, obviously that, that, that kind of discourages me, but any other time in the history we're down 28 to 7, we get blown away. I mean, right. we just, that game is a landslide and we're done. But this game we kept battling and battling and battling. And when it came down to the very end, we got 57,000 fans in Lubbock that are Texas Tech fans. And me as a fan, I know that they respected us. They did. I mean, it was a whole different tune from first half to second half. And after the game, I went out in Lubbock with my Mustang shirt on. There wasn't a single person saying anything bad about us. And that's what I'm proud of, is that we really proved ourselves. And minus four on the turnover column and lose by eight to a Big 12 school in their home stadium, it's, that's it. That's, 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 it's a sign that right. things are in the right direction. It's a sign that things are in the right direction. I know that our guys believe that we can win. And I, I, I saw that at the SMU kickoff luncheon. You go to the luncheon, they're walking around proud. The guys are big and strong. And they believe in Coach Jones. And whatever he says is, is the word. And, and, and you can see it. And when he says we can go down to Lubbock and win, they believed it. And they did. 
I know, I know Pony fans are tired of hearing the word young, but the fact is this is once again a very young team, including with a young quarterback. And he, Kyle is so focused and intense, and he plays with, a, I guess, a level of maturity. You sometimes forget how little he's played. He only played a handful of games in high school before he hurt his hand, and then he played six games last year. When he threw those couple of interceptions, I know neither of you guys ever threw an interception, but when he threw a couple of interceptions out in Lubbock, how do you, especially as a young guy, how do you put that out of your mind and get past that and, and just erase that from your memory to go forward and have a successful drive the next time? You just have to know that you, you, you gotta have confidence in the system. And the, the, the positive thing about it is that he was, he was making the correct plays. There was a time he maybe should have thrown it away. It's first down. There was a time when he saw Aldrick and he, he underthrew it by about two or three yards. But the good thing is you can always pull somebody back and say, we just need to calm it down a little bit. Here's the plays, but you can't always speed somebody up. And so you can't always say, hey, we need you to play a little faster, a little stronger, a little, you know. But you can always say, you're doing great, Kyle, but there's three or four plays that we think about in the whole period of the game that we make those plays we possibly can win the game. And that, that's the good part is that it's really simple to coach that. You know, and, and, he, and he don't, he's not afraid to make the plays. He just needs to handle the ball a little better on sometimes. That's it. The announcers on ESPN talked a couple of times about, you know, a good team sort of forces the bounces to go their way or they make their own luck. And they talked about how Texas Tech had a couple of plays where they threw the ball, it got tipped in the air, and another receiver came wandering along and grabbed one. Toward the end of the game, SMU got a late touchdown where Kyle threw one into the end zone. It gets tipped up in the air, and Cole Beasley grabs it for a touchdown. Is there any truth to that? Is there, can that kind of play sort of switch the, the mojo and the momentum around the team and, and help them turn the corner going into the next week? You know, that was, that was like a third and seven, and we had the ball, you know, I was thinking in that situation, you you got to score a couple times, go ahead and take three. And I was sitting there talking to my buddy I was with. I said, what do you call on third and seven with, you know, I mean, what do you, and we watched him play and he go, well, you call the bounce pass. That's an easy one. Just throw it off. And I, I threw one of those in, in um, Austin one time. You, you got to work hard on that play. But <laughs> called the bounce pass? The, the, you know, it, Literally it, it, skipping it off? Yeah, no, okay. It went off as one of their defenders' heads and it popped up and, I don't know, Leach or somebody caught it. And it, you know, the, the, the ball is shaped a funny way. It's going to bounce a funny way. And it, it was. It, that's why this is such a great game. And uh, the fact of the matter is our guys battled the whole day, and, and it, was a, it was a fun time. And I think they're going to win a bunch of games this year. One reason Kyle is as good as he is so early in his career is he's incredibly focused, incredibly intense, and he's a very harsh critic of his own performance. I talked to him Tuesday morning. He said, that was the worst performance of my life, which may be, you know, lingering emotions because he was disappointed with the loss. But is that kind of um, self-evaluation and grit born into a leader, or is that something that coaches can actually develop and help foster as he gets older and more mature as a player? Well, he's, he, you know, we're all go always going to make mistakes. I mean, it's going to happen, and it's how you deal with that moving forward. And, you know, in the paper this morning, uh, June Jones said that he's, you know, Kyle beats himself up, but, you know, that's behind us. We got UAB on Saturday night, and everybody knows that we played hard and we played well, and, you know, if he didn't play his best, then he's got another opportunity to, you know, to, to show what he can do. And, and I, I'm hopeful that he'll continue to battle and, and uh, get better and better every week, which should be the case. And if so, we're going to uh, have a pretty good ball club. All right, you mentioned UAB. Your favorite team is coming into town. Um, for the home opener Saturday night, uh, if any of you don't have tickets, go get them. Um, how is it different playing your first home game of the year with the boulevard, with your own crowd, with mom and dad in the crowd? Um, how, how is it different having that first game out of the way on the road? And are you more settled in? Are you more excited? Do you get even more nervous because you've got to perform for people that you know? I think you're more settled in. You're at home. It's where you practice every day. That's where all your fans are. Uh, 
you know, after an incredible performance at, at Tech, I went down and watched the, uh, the band play our alma mater, and there was a group of, I don't know, I'm gonna say several hundred kids that were so proud of us, and I was proud. Our guys came and stood over there. I mean, that's something to build on. I'm not happy about the loss by any means, but it's, we're coming home and we're gonna have more of that. And I could see that the, I mean, the, the, the momentum is growing. People are enjoying it and it's, it's gonna be great for Padron. He's gonna come back. He may be a hard critic on himself, but the truth of the matter is, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think Padron lost the game and neither did anybody else. There are some plays we didn't make as a team. We make the plays, we, we, could, we have a chance. And uh, it, it's, we're, we're coming back in our conference. Okay, as you said, you know, Kyle, again, he's a very critical guy. He, he is an absolute perfectionist. His roommate says he's a perfectionist about everything he does in his life. But he said, all through camp, coaches and teammates alike were talking about how his accuracy was noticeably better than last year, where he hit all his receivers right in stride. And against Texas Tech, that was off by just a little bit. Guys would have to reach back for a ball or reach ahead. How do you correct that within a week? Is that nerves, do you think? Just opening day jitters? Or did you guys as quarterbacks see anything in footwork or mechanics that can be tweaked in a week? I, I don't know how to answer that other than the speed of the game might be picked up a little bit when you play a Texas Tech compared to a Nevada. Um, that doesn't say anything about him under throwing a ball or you know receivers having to make plays um, he's got a different crew out there you know he's got a different group and um, it's early uh, the speed of a practice or a scrimmage before a you know, compared to a game is it's night and day but again I think he's a sharp kid I've only been around him a few times he, he he's not gonna let dwell on that I mean, he's, he wants to go and win the next one, and then the next one. I can't wait for the Horn Frogs to come in here and we kick their ass when they're number four in the country. That would, can you imagine how much fun will that would be on a Friday night? TCU, all their per, the ugly color and coming in here from Fort Worth. Uh, You're right, anyway. he is a tough guy. He is a smart guy. Um, he's, he's a perfectionist. With that said, what kind of performance do you expect out of Kyle in the offense Saturday when UAB is in Ford Stadium? I expect exactly what I expected uh, for game one. I mean, he's, gonna, he's got to come out and be a leader, and uh, I believe in him. I think the team believes in him. Coach Jones believes in him. People have a bad game and miss a couple of plays every once in a while, but the truth is he, made, he missed a couple of plays. It's a couple of plays, and it's one game. It's over. Yeah, I don't it's think over. he even had a bad game. I mean, if you, if you think about it, the poor kid, he gets every play on the sideline. And um, it was late in the fourth quarter, and he scrambled left away from our, you know, our bench. We made a first down uh, before we scored um, the second to last time. He had to get up, getting pounded on their sideline, run all the way over and get his play from June Jones. I mean, I, I, I think the guy runs 10 miles a day, you know. Just going back and forth to the bench? Yeah, it's June's deal. I mean, he comes and gets the eye contact and kind of tells him to play and kind of, you know, that's what he does. But from a quarterback standpoint, I'd like to do some kind of signals and be able to, you know, sit back there and maybe get a rest. But after every play, he jogs you know, 50 yards. I'm with you. If that's a bad game, you take it, right? I mean, oh, yeah. he's had it's seven career game. starts, and for the fifth time in those seven starts, he had multiple touchdown passes. If that's the worst game he's ever going to play, this team's in really good hands, yeah. wouldn't you say? He's in good shape. All right, predictions for Saturday night. I, I, I think SMU comes out and gets a win at home. I mean, that's what we got to do. Yeah, I, I don't know how to predict. I, I just play for a W. Win, win by one or more is good with me. One or a hundred doesn't matter? You know, I, I'd love to have Houston come back in here and win by a hundred, um, <laughs> but um, that's a whole nother story. Yeah, one, one game at a time and winning by one or more is, is good by me. Sounds good. All right, I want to thank our guests, Jared Romo, Lance McElhenney, two of the great SMU quarterbacks. This has been Pony Fans Live. Thank you. And again, if anybody has any questions for either of these guys, march up to the microphone and fire away.